All right, we're at section 21.4, the Carnot engine. Uh, and this is a image of uh, Sadi Carnot, uh, French engineer. And uh, he states that no real heat engine operating between two energy reservoirs can be more efficient than a Carnot engine operating between the same two reservoirs. Um, now the Carnot engine is an idealized engine. It, um, it, because it relies on reversible processes, it doesn't really exist, but it's an idealization and no uh, real engine can, can operate at a, an efficiency greater than a Carnot engine. So let's see what, uh, uh, what we have uh, here. The, uh, you, you can see we have a, uh, a heat engine. This is kind of like the first diagram we saw of a real heat engine. You have a hot, a hot reservoir, the heat engine, it's putting work um, it's, it's doing work and it's going, uh, the excess is going to the cold reservoir. Um, now the input of this heat engine is the work going into the Carnot heat pump. Uh, and it's pulling the energy out of the cold reservoir and putting it into the hot reservoir. Um, so we're gonna assume an efficiency greater than the efficiency of a Carnot um, engine. And we get that the uh, work divided by the, uh, the absolute value of work divided by the absolute value of the Q hot uh, is greater than the work of the Carnot uh, engine divided by the uh, absolute value of Q hot cold. Um, so Q hot cold, I mean, I'm sorry, that's Q hot Carnot is greater than Q hot. Uh, so here's the Q hot Carnot. Here's the the Q hot. Uh, this is greater than than that. Uh, so the work equals the work of the Carnot. You can see it's the same. Uh, so uh, Q hot uh, minus Q hot Carnot is equal to Q hot Carnot minus Q cold Carnot, uh, which gives us that Q hot Carnot minus Q hot is equal to Q cold uh, Carnot minus uh, Q Carnot. Now let's look at, uh, because up here, we see that uh, the absolute value of Q hot Carnot is greater than Q hot. This side must be positive, which this side means that this side must be positive also. Um, so the, uh, we can see that the, uh, let, let's see, see um, the energy, the net energy exchange with the hot reservoir is equal to the net energy exchange with the cold reservoir. As a result, for the combination of the heat engine and the heat pump, energy is transferring from the cold reservoir to the hot reservoir by heat with no input of energy by work from the surroundings. And this result is in violation of the Clausius statement of the second law. Uh, therefore, the original assumption that E is greater than EC is is incorrect. Um, now let's look at the Carnot cycle um, for the engine, but keep in mind that we're also uh, side by side, we're gonna be discussing this uh, PV diagram, uh, A to B, B to C, uh, C to D and D to A. So we have an isothermal um, path here. We have an adiabatic path, and then we have a, another isothermal path back this way, and then an adiabatic uh, from D to A. So let's go back um, to the, uh, this is the entire cycle. Um, let's look at it in detail. The A to B, the gas undergoes an isothermal expansion. Uh, and if you recall from the, the PV diagram, indeed, uh, the volume increase uh, so because of the, the Q hot coming in, it, there's an expansion. Now we put a thermal insulator, so there is no more transfer of, of, of energy via heat. Uh, so the gas undergoes an adiabatic expansion. No more heat is being added uh, to it. And C to D, the gas undergoes an isothermal compression. Um, so it's hooked up to an energy reservoir at T cold. Uh, and it's compressed. And then there's a, th uh, the gas undergoes an adiabatic compression. Uh, again, Q equals zero. And this is, uh, remember, 
uh, A to B is isothermal, then an adiabatic compression, and then uh, 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 isothermal, uh, I, I'm sorry, adiabatic expansion. This is a, a isothermal compression and this is an adiabatic compression. So this is the PV diagram of the same Carnot cycle that we saw. Now the energy, the thermal efficiency of the Carnot cycle is E equals one minus uh, Q cold, absolute value of Q cold over absolute value of Q hot. Um, Q cold is equal to the, uh, T cold and Q hot is equal to T hot. So the uh, energy of the, ener the efficiency of the Carnot engine is equal to one minus uh, T cold uh, divided by T hot. Um, and the coefficient of performance in the heating mode is uh, Q hot divided by work. Uh, and it all ends up down to uh, T hot divided by T hot minus T cold. Um, now let's let's keep in mind this uh, equation here as we go through this this uh, uh, exercise. Three engines operate between reservoirs separated in temperature by 300 K. The reservoir temperatures are as follows: uh, Engine A, uh, T hot is 1,000 Kelvin. T C is 700 Kelvin. Engine B, uh, T hot is 800 Kelvin. T cold is 500 Kelvin. Engine C, T hot is 600 Kelvin and TC is 300 Kelvin. Rank the engines in order of theoretically possible efficiency from highest to lowest. Well, it's hard to just look at those uh, and tell. So I did a little calculating here for you. Uh, since E is equal to one minus uh, T cold over T hot, we have uh, E of A is one minus 700 over a thousand. Uh, it's 0.7, so it's e equals to 0 0.300. And, uh, efficiency of B, is 0 0.375 and the efficiency of C is equal to uh, 0 0.5, 300 K divided by 600 K is 0 0.5. So one minus 0 0.5 is, uh, uh, 500, is 0 0.5. So we see that the rankings of highest to lowest are C, B and A. And that's the end of the uh, Carnot cycle uh, discussion.